Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about this little lens here. It's been on quite an incredible journey. It's a little bit like a chainmail kind of scenario and I think I'm probably like the eighth person now to have it. It's been all over the US, it's now in Europe and the plan is to get it all the way through to Australia before it goes back to the original owner. So in today's video, I just want to talk about this lens, talk about how good it is. It's a 40mm Summicron C which I think is actually a Minolta lens rebranded to Leica. So yeah, in today's video, let's have a look and see just how good this lens is. So for a little bit of history behind this lens, in the 1970s Leica had just released the Leica M5, it wasn't selling all that well and they partnered up with Minolta to make a cheaper camera which was the Leica CL. Now one of the things they did with the Leica CL was they made it a 40mm frame lined camera and then this lens came along, the Summicron C that is a 40mm lens. Now because of that partnership with Minolta there is also a Minolta branded version of this exact same lens as well. Now in terms of like what happened and do Leica still claim they made this or not, I think something that is quite interesting is my Leica M11 does not have the profile for this lens. It has profiles in there for so many historical lenses but not this one. Now because it's a 40mm focal length that means there isn't the frame lines in a typical M camera. I imagine they probably did that to kind of separate the sales of their 35mm and their 40mm Summicron, this one here, to try and make there a little bit of difficulty in terms of opting for the cheaper brand. Now what that means for me, using this on my Leica M11, it means there's no frame lines and not on any M camera either. What you can do if you want to is you can modify this a little bit, not entirely sure how, I've seen some people talking about filing or cutting something off to choose between the 35mm and the 50mm frame lines through the viewfinder. And I think 50mm is probably my preference. I would rather get a little bit more image than what I think I'm going to get rather than have a 35mm frame line and then get less than I was expecting. But that's the kind of funny history behind this lens. It was partnered with Minolta. There is a Minolta version of this lens as well that I think had better coatings and Leica seemingly don't like to talk about this lens very much at all and it isn't in the profiles of the M11. So then let's move on to the build and design of this lens. Now the first thing that stands out is just how tiny it is. This is a tiny little lens. I think this is actually the smallest lens Leica have ever made and if you put it next to the TT Artisan's 28mm f5.6 it actually looks really small even next to that lens. When it comes to the actual build quality, everything actually feels pretty good. And bear in mind, this is 50 years old. It feels like Leica lenses that I've used from around that era. I think the only thing that stands out with this exact example is the aperture ring is a little bit sloppy, but again, this is a pretty old lens. It's not as like precise as maybe I think it might have been when you first bought it. I think the other thing that stands out from the aperture as well is the dot for the aperture is not on the top of the lens. It's actually slightly off to the left a little bit. It's kind of, yeah, I reckon a centimeter round. It just looks a little bit odd when you're setting your aperture. It doesn't really cause any problems. And I think the other thing from a build point of view is this tab on the bottom, the focusing tab, might actually be made out of plastic. It's not easy to tell, but it doesn't feel cold like the rest of the lens does. Something that is a little bit odd about this lens, and I think a little bit annoying, is the lens hood. The lens hood is actually made out of rubber. And 50 years ago, this rubber might have been a little bit easier to use than it is today. And annoyingly, the lens cap attaches to the hood and not to the lens. You could probably easily go and buy a cap that fits, but this isn't my lens and we're going to get to that in a little bit. And when we were talking about the 40mm frame lines earlier, not having them, I actually found myself using the Visoflex quite a lot. So you'll see it in a lot of clips during this video and I have got a review on that coming soon as well. And then we get to the performance and this is a lens that definitely sways towards being full of character rather than optical perfection. But I think as long as you're happy with that, I think you'll be pretty impressed with this little guy. It's definitely better than its small size might suggest. When it comes to sharpness, even in the center wide open, it is more than good enough for anything I could ever need. It's not as good as the modern Leica optics, which you shouldn't really expect it to be, but it's more than sharp enough for anything I could ever want. The corners are definitely a little bit soft wide open, but stopping down brings them back in line pretty quickly. The bokeh of this lens 
is definitely an odd one and might be something that you either love or hate. It's a little bit busy, it's definitely onion ringed, and it feels like it becomes the main subject of the photo in some of the images I took rather than kind of like seamlessly blending into the background. I personally, I think I actually sway towards actually really enjoying it because I think I'm always gonna pick a lens up like this because I want character and not optical perfection. If I was doing something commercially where I wanted optical perfection, then well, I just wouldn't pick this lens up. But from like a hobby and fun perspective, this lens really does pack some character. When it comes to ghosting and flares, wide open, you do get quite a lot of both. I found it flared pretty badly, to be honest, but it is definitely that like typical red kind of glow that you get from Leica lenses. It actually looks quite good in some images like this one. The ghosting and flaring, yeah, it's pretty bad. But interestingly, what I found was stopping it down from f2 to f2.8 made a massive difference. Like it felt like two completely different lenses, wide open versus just stopped down one stop. And when it comes to chromatic aberrations, you know what, I think it's pretty well controlled. I couldn't find an image really that showed really bad purple fringing or anything like that. Optically, it is pretty good, this little lens. I was actually super impressed with its performance overall. If you've been wondering what all the little numbers mean down at the bottom of the images, that links to my stackable preset collection. As an example, if you take this raw file, apply basic adjustment four, and then tone curve seven, you end up with this final image. If you want a little bit more information about these presets, you can find a link down in the description. So then at the start of this video, I said that this lens here, this one in particular, was part of some incredible journey around the world. Now what's actually happening here then is this lens has traveled all around the US and has now made its way to Europe and into the UK and it's in my hands at the moment. And it's part of like a big chain mail of photographers using the lens and then sending it on to the next one. And the mastermind behind this is a guy called Palm that I met over on Instagram when he reached out and asked me if I wanted to be a part of the story of this lens. And of course, I jumped at the opportunity it's really incredible and he is making a blog and some videos over on his socials that I'll link down in the description as well. So if you want to see a little bit more about where it's been and where it might be going, then you can find that down in the description. But thank you Palm for reaching out and offering me to be a part of this lens's story. For me personally then, my experience of this lens is it is a lens full of character. I think the thing that resonated with me most was this small compact size. I have found myself over the last month picking this lens up over my Summerlux lenses because it's small and it's really got me questioning whether or not I should move down to Summercrons for the weight saving and the size saving because yeah I've really appreciated just how small this little lens is. If you've enjoyed today's video though guys please do not forget to like and subscribe there is plenty more Fuji and Leica content coming to the channel and I'm hoping to do some more sort of like story led stuff like this one as well so yeah if you've enjoyed don't forget and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.